What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Pete and Sebastian Show. Before we get started, just want to remind you guys, November 5th, Saturday night, big show, Gramercy Theater. I'll be in New York City at the Gramercy Theater, November 5th, Saturday night. November 11th, I'll be right here in my town, Fredonia, playing the Opera House. But you go to PeteCorielli.com. I'm playing almost every Friday, everywhere from Milwaukee to Chicago to L.A., Philly, so Cleveland. I uh, hope you guys can make it out to one of the shows. Now let's get started, baby. This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. Pete and Sebastian Show, I'm starting it off today. Um, looking across the, the glass here, we got Pete in a form fitting. T-shirt, guns a blazing, oh, and uh, I, I, Jesus Christ, what is that? A mini? It's listen. I have my jersey here, which I'll put back on in a minute. This is what I was going with, my very simple jersey. But setting up for the cast, I was sweating. I, I keep a tight T under this because it's itchy. This is a John Varvatos. I tried to throw it out two weeks ago. I had it in my pile for the thrift store, and Jackie wouldn't let me throw it out. She's like, the hell, you don't throw that out? I go, it doesn't fit me. It's too tight. It's ridiculous. So I wear it as an undershirt, and I forgot to suit back up in the process of I was hot. So anyway. Hey, well, listen, if you want to you want to show off the JV, that's fine. I know Varvedos ain't a cheap garment. Ah, which, it's just the name. Which, well, listen. We weren't yeah. even planning on talking about this, but before you throw anything out, do you look at the brand before you throw it out? And if it's a Varvados type shirt, even though it doesn't fit, are there are you hemming and hawing on it? Let, let, let's say that was a Hanes. Yeah, right. No problem, right? But it, I, I would have already waxed up, my car with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So what you're saying is, did did you have a hard time parting with that, or was bro? It... It's unbelievable. Our, our sense of humor is the same for three, four years maybe. I haven't fit in this thing, and I'm like, well, I'll lose a little weight maybe when I get smaller, and I'll, I'll be glad I have it. And every time I try it on once a summer, it's just too tight. And I just look at that label, and it's John Valvados, and I'm like. I, got, I, got, I can't throw that out. Even if I don't keep it, I got to wait till a nephew grows into that size and then just hit him with a Varvados tea at a barbecue for no reason. Just come downstairs. But yeah, absolutely. So, And then finally when I parted with it, I was like, enough is enough. And then Jackie did it. She looked at the label and said, you just don't do that. <laughs> So now it's back on, baby. And like you said, if it was a Hanes, it would have been gone a long time ago. Yeah, it's amazing how we look at that stuff. I did a massive clearing of my closet recently, and I was hemming and hawing on certain things because I think the same way you do. Oh, yeah, I'm going to lose some weight, and I'll fit into that. I got a whole side of the closet that just is designated for when I lose weight, and it hasn't happened yet. So. How long are you going to keep this stuff? Um, well, I got, it's interesting you say that because I got, from my New York City days, I got these five vintage t-shirts that are rock and roll. What are you looking for? You're right. <laughs> keep that mic close. Don't forget. <laughs> I like, I like the fact that I looked around twice and, and man, we not, we might not even get to the things we got to talk about just based on what we're doing right now. Do you see that in the crowd sometimes where you're doing comedy and you might see someone like fidgeting or not paying attention? And do you call that out or do you do you go in your head, what the hell is this guy doing? And just blow through that or do you have to mention it? No, no, I'll I usually call it out. I did it, I was at Mohegan Sun last week. I got it on tape. Uh there was a guy. Everyone's dying laughing, and this guy he wasn't looking around, but he wasn't laughing. He was dead center, about ten rows back, and I, I think I told him in an inflationary times what a bargain I am, and it's unbelievable that he wasn't laughing. And then as I sip my beer, I go dead center. They're always dead center too, you know. 
But uh, yeah, I, I'm not one of those comics that can just plow through it. I don't even like, do you like, like when I look back at a show and I feel like, I feel like I could have been doing it to black light. I don't like that. You know, when it's, when there doesn't seem to be any specialness about you being in that crowd, just something, you know, just a moment. Yeah, I, I think it's nice to kind of cut that fourth wall. And as comedians, I think we see things like that. And that's kind of what makes us comedians is we point out kind of the things that other people might just take for granted. I'll, I'll give you an example. I was at the airport in Chicago yesterday, and I'm waiting to get on the plane. And the guy, there's a couple in front of me, and the guy kept turning around in the line, and he was facing me. And then he would turn back, turn around and then turn back. Now, I feel if you're in a line anywhere, yeah, you can't turn around and face the rest of the line, right? Like, you, right. your positioning no. needs to be forward at all time. You could glance, maybe, but this guy was doing full body turns, and I don't know like if he was waiting for someone or what he was doing, but he was staying there too long. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I I give it like five seconds if you want to turn around. If it's if it's more than five seconds, I think that needs to be addressed. And I was on I was on the verge of going, You looking for somebody? Right. But I didn't want to get into it. I, you know, it was one of those things where get out of I just want to get on the plane. And when All I right. got on the plane, I sat next to a guy with a mask on. And I don't know why I was bothered by this guy, but I just, something was coming off of him that I knew I was going to have a problem with. Well, I was wearing a mask. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Telling you all you need to know, but go ahead. And I timed it. I timed it. Every 11 minutes, every 11 minutes, he was doing this. <laughs> thoughts <laughs> I, I i was waiting for you to go but honestly i feel like making bodily noises should be taken into the bathroom just as much as going to the bathroom is taken into the bathroom you know like every morning my my throat is so dry i don't want to get too gross but i could clear out my throat <clears throat> just from sleeping with my mouth open like by three or four <clears throat> and then a nice spit into the toilet yeah. And Jackie's like, you're like a goddamn rooster with that shit, waking up everyone else, take it. So now when I wake up, bro, for like two minutes, I got to make it downstairs. And I'm like, I want to clear my throat. I want to clear my throat, you know? And then I open up the back door and spit, and then I'm good to go, right? Again, what? I'm not taking a dump, but you're making a bodily noise. Get that shit away from other human beings, man. Bro, it, well, it's I mean, pointless. The, the animals out there. The fucking world is falling apart. That's another show. In your in your case, there's a lot of ash down there. Yeah, listen, I, I tried to say I sleep with my mouth open. You couldn't leave it at that. You got to <laughs> take a jab with the weed, get it in. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. I think you'd be surprised, though. I don't think I clear my throat more than the average person. You'd be surprised, man. Well, I mean, but, I don't know. Yeah. I, I think every 11 minutes on a three and a half hour flight is a little excessive. And I think you take that into the bathroom and <laughs> get all that shit out once instead of your little pansy at 11 minutes like a, a cockadoo coming out of a clock, right? Bro, I, it was one of those things where if it was me and I was doing that, I would have to tell the person next to me, listen, I'm gonna, I am got I got a throat issue right now. I don't know what's going on, but I, I, I'm huh. going to be it's like... A little I, I don't no? want to hear that guy. I, I don't want. To, I, I I think that's you'd good rather just hear it with no explanation. No, you know the move. The move is you do it and then you say something negative about yourself, right? Like you go, <laughs> Jesus Christ, the hell! So they know that you know it's a problem that you're trying to deal with. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, you go. <laughs> God, I need some water. When did I come with the water? Shit, you know. <laughs> So the guy next to you goes, all right, he's obviously on top of this. You got to go, excuse me, sir. I think I have a fucking disease and I can't. I mean, what do you got? 
I don't know, man. I was just and you then don't even say the, hello. <laughs> right. On the other on the other far, uh, on the other flight. Yeah. I don't know where it was coming, but every three minutes I would get a waft of a fart. Someone was farting every three minutes, bro. I it, it, I don't know what, why you get on a plane and all of a sudden all manners decorum out the window. Right, right, right. Well, I tell you, I I am convinced that the pressure j- changing in the cabin affects what a man's stomach bowels. Because like I get on a plane and all of a sudden I'm I got a fart and I didn't have to when I wasn't. But it's just air, you know what I mean? You let out, you know how that goes. But anyway, when I smell one, bro, I, I Jackie told me I was an immature, I'm being an immature idiot. When I'm on the plane, like we're going to Berlin and somebody let out a fart around me, I go, I take my shirt and I go, Jesus Christ, unbelievable, man. Just unbelievable shit. And I go like that. And I hope. I hope the guy is in my radius and he's looking, going, oh, God, I let out one more. This guy's going to start smelling people's asses. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that shit, uh, you, should be, you should be fined. You should be fined for farting in public. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Oh, man. man. I don't know, bro. I, keep, I, I make fun of China, but every other day I'm saying shit that they do in China. I, I don't know, man. You know? I think well, you get maybe. fined for that. I <laughs> I told you the babies and shit everywhere over there. Forget that. <laughs> uh, all right, so we got we all got right, all right. that out of the way. What's going on? What do you what do you got on your end? I, I know you were like my my text messages were firing up here prior to the uh, show starting. Bro, bro, we got we got a we had a conversation you and I. We got a lot. It's you know, listen. I know you, the careers are we got going aside, everything else going on, but the. the cast i was like i gotta start being more prepared you know what i'm saying whether we go with what i have or whether we go with what you have it's just good to have it and we love doing it and i was gonna bring this up before the cast about you said let's save it so i'll be honest word got back to me there was a facebook chat group about the cast and they were sharing comments about feeling there's not enough going on on patreon and it's, and somebody was like the clips aren't enough, and someone else was like, yeah, but you get a whole show for five bucks, and they're like, we should get more. So I'm, you know, I'm yeah, okay. I mean, what me, do we let do? Let we me do? address this right off the bat. Number one, yeah. I I subscribe to a lot of different things, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I uh, podcasts, uh, some news sites that I pay for. Hulu, whatever. If you look at my subscriptions, there's a lot that I subscribe to. Not once, once have I ever got on a chat room and discussed why Hulu's not putting out more dramas. Well, you know, I mean, Hulu's not as popular as the Pete and Sebastian show, and they're chirping, guy. They're chirping. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I don't... I, 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 I'm, listen, all I can say is we're trying. It's a work in progress to figure out other ways to also bring more to the table. I, I mean, you know, you're looking at me like... I'm looking at you because it's a five bucks. You get, it's, it's a cup of coffee. We're giving you I, a, I, I, a, a couple videos, uh, 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 one a month. The I, fuck I you know, want? I know, a camera but... in my bedroom? I... <laughs> That's the third tier level. That's fifteen dollars <laughs> a month. You get the cameras in the bedroom for an extra three dollars a month. I'll walk my dog and have you on the FaceTime with me when I walk it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But uh, listen, folks. All right. So just what? And then this, you know. Uh, all right. That's it. I don't know how else to make it more special. I mean, I really don't. I mean, don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We'll, we'll 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 figure it out. We'll get some more stuff up there. And I, I, I'm coming in hot today. I'm a li- I'm a little agitated. I could tell. I could tell. What's I up? think this is a good spot for it. Yeah. I got another text from my mother. Oh, all right, Mama Maniscalco. This is pertaining to the uh, the episode. I think we just put out 
This is what I get yesterday at 8.44 p.m. All right. The cast. Clapping? You don't clap for anyone? <laughs> I love it. What if no one clapped for you? Think of what you're saying, kid. Wow. Wow, man. I thank God Rose is out there doing her thing. So I go, and I'm, granted, I'm a little harsh here because I'm coming off an episode with my father. He was in Vegas with me this weekend. We were backstage with mixed company. My neighbors, my old neighbors from the old neighborhood, good friend of mine, Michael, was there. And my dad said that I sucked the night before. He goes, this show tonight was unbelievable. Last night you sucked. Now, I took that in. And then I was in Chicago for the last two days. And I said, listen, when you came to Vegas and you were backstage... And you said I sucked. I go, probably not the best time to say that in mixed company. You know, like I know you got strong feelings about what I do and what have you, but you know, read the room. He goes, I'm sorry, but I didn't say you sucked. I go, I was right there. He goes, no, I just said you were better to better tonight than you were last night. I go, Dad, you said I sucked. He goes, I'm sorry I didn't say that, but I'm sorry for saying what I said. Now, as you well know, when you're in the entertainment business, everybody's got something to say, right? Uh Anytime you put out anything, someone's got a comment, someone's got, you should have did this, you should have did that. So I'm coming off the dad thing. Now, last night, I get the mom thing. So I go, please stop texting me this shit. Eh? This is comedy. I said, does... Who said this is comedy? I did. Uh-huh. This is comedy. I said, does... Da- I do a joke about my dad putting antifreeze on bologna, right? Mm-hmm. To kill mm-hmm. to kill varmints in the backyard. Right. But he doesn't. My friend's dad does it, but I made it my dad. I says, does dad use antifreeze in his backyard to kill animals? No. I heard the story from someone else. It's comedy. All right? This is what I get back. We will talk when I see you. I won't text anymore. I come back. Stop listening to the cast. I'm tired with everybody having an opinion about every fart. I blow. It's all for the show. All right? This is what I get back. I'm not going to stop listening. I enjoy it. Why do you have to get angry? Just hearing it differently. That's all. I'm your mom. I'm concerned for you. That's all. (laughs) What you think is funny sometimes is differently out of context. I'm not trying to put you down. Just being your mom. Looking out for you, and and I will no matter how old you are. Because I love you. Period. Bro, I, I'm almost crying right now. <laughs> that, this, that, this is that's a mom. This is all doing over her job. This is all over clapping. <sighs> it's it's not all over clapping. I mean, we we tend to try to be funny, but we're gonna have a moment here. Let's have a moment here. There is there is times where, um, how do I put this? 
uh, you need people. You need people like your mom because if you don't have people like your mom in the position you're at, eventually you think it's okay to get up out of your seat at the Oscars and go smack the host. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> That's that is why you need people around you to keep you grounded when nothing around you is grounded. You understand? So that's why I bust your balls sometimes, even on the cast, about certain things. And, you know, even though you say things for the joke sometimes, it's okay at the end to go, oh, I'm just joking. I do clap and I appreciate everybody. To th- I mean, you know, that's all your mom's Listen, looking at. Do you, think looking I don't cla- do you think I don't clap at an event? Yeah, I cl- but, you know, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. That's all I'm saying, man. I, I agree with that. I don't always clap. Sometimes. Sometimes even if I like the performance, if everyone else is clapping so much, I do like you said, you don't really need me. I mean, I'm not adding to this, so, but, yeah. but you know, other times I lead it. Yeah, well, that's all right. Listen, to tell your mom to stop listening to the cast, bro, what is going on with you? I'm just saying, if you got a problem with the cast, man, there's an option not to listen. Okay, now let's put this in perspective, okay? You're old and gray, having a lovely life of retirement with Lana. Maybe even you're on, I don't know, let's put you on a yacht, enjoying a good life, and you're listening to uh, Caruso's got some killer cast or something like that he does. Uh, And then you think he's saying a few things that you think aren't things he should be saying. You're not going to get to the first port and call him on a landline and go, shut that down. Why are you telling people that part? Even if he's like that, I'm doing my thing. Don't worry about it. That's what a parent does. They get involved to the day they die. I get it. I'm a parent. I know. I know the concern. But if I came out here and I said something that was really off the wall, okay, I, I, then you then you call me on it. But not clapping periodically at, at events that I go to, whether it be a a football game or a someone's getting done with a speech. This is what we're worried right. about. Right. Well, but you got to nip it in the bud. I can't tell you how many times I try to trim a tree. I forget to. Next thing you know, I need to call the tree guy because it's out of hand. Your mom is trimming branches. <laughs> I want to focus more. I want to focus more on your dad. All right. I need to get a camera on him and see if every haircut he gives is four-star unbelievable, right? I mean, just enjoy the steak and the, and the private plane, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, your job is over, right? You motivated me. I got here. Now, just relax, all right? Everything you say should just be great, great, awesome, great, great. Holy shit. Critiquing? Well, no. He said, and we got into it in the room. His theory with my act is I should go out there night after night and do the same act verbatim, word for word, every night. Same order, same words, everything the same. And I told him, I had a great show the other night, Saturday, sorry, Sunday first show. It was one of those shows where, now as a comedian, Don't you believe that the audience has a lot to do with what type of show you have? Sometimes, for example, when you go out, you feel it. There's an energy in your room. You you connect it to it right away, and you're like, oh, wow, this is beautiful. It's a beautiful back and forth. The timing, the laughs, the way they're laughing is is just magic. The next Mm -hmm. night. Same act, right? You come out, maybe you're not feeling it right away. Something's off in the room. I don't know what it is. You're not connected. You're not piped in. And the same joke that you just delivered last night, you're delivering maybe in a different tone, a different way, because you're not feeling what you felt the night before. It's all contingent. It's like a dance. The audience off, it's you you might, you know, have to adjust or what have you. My dad thinks you just go out there and you do the same thing, and the people are going to respond the same way night after night. And I was trying to tell him, number one, this guy acts like he's done comedy for 30 years. I could understand if I went into the hair business 
and I wasn't doing a haircut the way he thought he <laughs> I should do it, then he's got yeah. a point. He's been in the business for 50 years. But this guy right. acts like he's uh, George Carlin. Right, yeah, yeah. Well, that's how Colin would do it, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, listen, I'm with you. I mean, even last week when I was at the Mohegan, I was doing a bit about Germany, and and the first night it was killing. I'm like, oh, I'm having fun with this. The big grows because you get a laugh, so you say something else. Two nights later, it wasn't really hitting. In my head, I'm like, what are these Nazi sympathizers right here? Like, and I, <laughs> and I slid right out of it. I slid out of it, and I went yeah. into something that we all could uh, have more fun with, you know. But um, if I would have stayed in the bit, and you could attest to this, I, I, I'm not going to enjoy it because I don't think they're enjoying it. And you'll see yeah. it all over my face, and it's just wasted time. So let's yeah. just, you know. I wish a musician would do that, you know. But I was at Billy Joel. He was playing one song, uh, Modern Woman. And, I mean, just the, like I told you, people were flocking to the bed. He should have just shut it down after the first chorus. He's been like, and I'm a... Wrap it, guys. Wrap it. <laughs> like... Why do you got to finish the bit? Why do you got to finish the song? It's clear no one's liking this shit. Shut it down. I mean, come on. But well, in a way, your father's doing the same thing as your mom, man. He's pushing you to keep giving a great product, you know? And that's no, awesome. I get it. I get it. I get that there's a, a, a parental responsibility baked into this whole thing. Fine. But, you know, when you got everybody and their mother chiming in on what the hell you're doing, and yeah, this is part of the game. It's what we signed up for. But sometimes it's like, all right, all right, just let me, you know, let me fly, and if I, you know, if I fall out of the sky, I, I fall you. out of the sky. So, uh, yeah, so so that's that, and I'm not gonna listen. To be honest with you, yeah, I hope I keep getting these texts from my mom. You know? I hope you do. Yeah, it's great for the cast. That's what I'm saying. You're telling your mom not to listen anymore. Don't send me this anymore. Believe me, it's you, 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 you can't say those things to your mom, guy. That's like against the law. Moms well, can invade on a level that's unheard of. <laughs> my mom, yeah, so that, yeah, I get it. Well, well, my mom and I will have a talk before this cast uh, the, uh, airs, and I will clear the air with her. But <laughs> you know, sometimes you lose a little patience with your parents, especially when they're getting up in age. You know. It's uh, you gotta you gotta kid, treat it with kid gloves. I was a little harsh, I admit it. All right, but yeah. in the time I was just like, all right, already. I'm sitting there having a beautiful dinner with my wife, and this is another thing, bro. I gotta do like, uh, like, uh, like office hours or something with the phone. After five o'clock or six, I just put it away. I told Lana to do this because Lana's on the phone constantly. I go, listen, we're sitting here. I made some steak, a little broccoli, some smashed potatoes. We're sitting around eating the dinner, and then I got this, and it's like, all right, it soils my night. So I'm going to try putting the phone away at, at nighttime. I, I, I don't want to be on the fucking thing. Well, like, uh, you bring up a good point, right? Because, like, I try to, <laughs> like, I, I went to Home Depot the other day, and then Jackie needed me, and she's like, you didn't bring your phone? I was like, to Home Depot? No, I didn't, but... The bigger picture, when I'm with my family and and you're done, and I don't want to be on my phone anymore, how big of a deal is it that if you find out somebody close to you passed away and people were trying to get a hold of you to tell you and you didn't find out until 8 a.m. the next morning? I mean, you know, like, are they going to be mad at you? Like, we've been trying for 10 hours. Like, well, whatever. The person has already passed away. What am I going to do, you know? Like, why are we obligated to be always available the assumption i think is people always have their phone whether they're in the bathroom at the dinner table it's in disgusting. bed i think people are like oh yeah they, they have to have their phone it, it must be right there uh oh. Oh, which God. you know it, it's it's terrible that you're that accessible but i was telling lon i go you know we just gotta have like even during the day you know between eight and five we're dealing with business we got to just set that up a lot better on our end and you know i'm not blaming other people for texting or, or emailing we just have to be a little bit more uh proactive in how we kind of set things up because you'd be on the phone till 10 o'clock at night you know it's like the it's like come on man uh by the way s switching to topics here did yeah. you did you did you what's up 
No, no, it's just, it was just like me looking for my my uh, my energy drink. I just had to had to wait till you pop back in. Uh, That's it. <laughs> All right, guys, the Pete and Sebastian Show has a new sponsor, Hello Fresh. I'm not kidding, baby. We are excited for this, and I'm looking forward to trying this one out. I've already heard about it, but I can't wait to tell you guys what I really think of it when I finally get the chance. Now, here's the deal with Hello Fresh. You get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep, all right? You skip going to the grocery store, you skip having to get in the car and go shopping. Count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy and fun and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh cuts out stressful meal planning. I can't tell you how many times the morning starts out and my wife is like, I don't know what to make for dinner tonight. I know I sound misogynist and having her say that, but the point is HelloFresh cuts away that stress, baby. There's no more planning, no more grocery steps. You can enjoy cooking and get dinner on the table in about 30 minutes or less. And HelloFresh is 30% cheaper than shopping at your local grocery store. Think about that. Skipping checkout lines and saving money. So I'm excited to place my first order. I really am. I'm excited to have HelloFresh on board as our first sponsor where we're talking and doing this. So join me, man. Go to HelloFresh.com slash TheCast65 and use the code TheCast65 for 65% off plus free shipping. Go to HelloFresh.com slash TheCast65 and use that code, baby, TheCast65 for 65% off plus free shipping. HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. Give it a try, baby. I really am, and I will report back. You finished Dahmer? Didn't finish Dahmer. Don't think I'm going to be able to finish it, bro. I got to tell you a couple reasons why. All right? I got First, I got an email from some listener who's very religious saying it's the devil's work, and don't go down that path. Don't finish watching it, which I was like, whatever. But two nights ago, we went to pop it on, and Dom's uh, got some dude over. He's getting drunk with the dude, and, you know, he's about to rape him. And Jackie's like, oh, my God, it's like six episodes in a row, getting drunk, raping, getting drunk, raping, you know? So, like, she didn't want to watch it, so I bailed on it, and I'm having a tough time getting her back on it, and I don't really watch TV without her. What Am I missing something, or is it just... As every episode is, he just drinks beer and kills somebody and fucks him. <laughs> well, I mean, shit, what a one-trick pony. No, I, <sighs> listen, I know, it's disturbing, I get it, but this is your, bro, this is, this is your assignment for the cast. That, <sighs> All right, I'll finish, I'll finish. I mean, you gotta go rogue and do it on, on your own time, then do it on your own time, you gotta finish, because there's other things that we gotta discuss. I mean, yeah. no. Since finish, the last time definitely. we talked, did you? Did you? I mean, listen. What happened to these people? Tragedy. My mm-hmm. heart goes out to the families that got to deal with this history of their 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 loved one going through hell and 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 back. But there's some things in this that we need to discuss, just to to bring to light, not necessarily these murders, but like how this guy's behaving, how the people around him are behaving, when he goes to uh-huh. prison, what happens. I mean, there's some oh, stuff that we got to right. we got to dig into. So tell Jackie to fucking right. put on some put on some <laughs> and, and get in there and and, and, <clears throat> and listen, I got a guy, I got a guy in my own uh my own inner circle that, you know, says Dahmer is one of these things where it's propaganda. What does that mean? In what way? They make you sympathize with a serial killer. The way it's portrayed, you almost oh. feel like sorry or like almost sympathetic <laughs> to, to Dahmer. Some people do. Oh, please. Right. I'm just saying. But he's saying that, oh, yeah, they put it out there to make it look like, uh, you know, Killing seventeen people, chopping them up, and eating their nuts is uh, right. is normal, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, dude, I I can't understand how how some people think in this in this world, bro. The, the way people are today, like you know, 
the fact that you're saying people sympathize with this guy the way people think different than us is insane this this i want to show you this this was sent from a female listener i believe the name was Aaron. i'm sorry I'm, oh no i wasn't gonna go with that one but show that one <laughs> I can't. It's 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 backwards. I can't. It's backwards. Told you. Yeah, you can leave after you you join Patreon. Oh my god! Someone sent you that. The fuck is yeah. that? It's like huh? a meme somebody made. Yeah. <laughs> Someone sent you that, or you picked it off the to me? Yeah. You talking to me. Sent- yeah, somebody yeah, sent me that. Yeah, who the fuck am I yeah. talking to? <laughs> I don't know, but I keep saying, yeah, somebody sent it. You keep asking the same thing. So I'm like, is he not hearing me? <laughs> Patrick, show Sebastian the letter that the woman sent, all right? Don't put it up yet. This is from a woman whose husband is a fireman in San Jose, all right? Okay. And again, you know, the firemen, the policemen, we don't even need to get into what heroes these guys are. And and what mm-hmm. what they got to deal with lately is just insanity. Her husband and a couple of the other firemen come back to the firehouse from going, I believe it's called Lucky's, the local supermarket, like firemen do to get food for the firehouse. Can you show that, Patrick? This is a note on the firehouse door. Can you show it to, um, you know, so, uh, yeah, can you flip that? I can read it. I can read it for you guys. All right. All right. Okay. Uh, dear E11 firemen, many times... When we have been to Lucky shopping, we've seen you guys go into Lucky's. We do not think it is a good or dutiful thing to do. I live in the villages, and seeing you at Lucky's means you have left your station, and it makes me terribly worried. You should do your shopping when you're not on duty and not taking the fire truck to do it as well. Yours sincerely, a worried villager. Uh, What I would do. If I was the fireman, right? We asked the the grocery store, rewind the tape. I want to see who put this on the fire truck, right? Do some due diligence. We find out where this person lives, right? Mm -hmm. And when that person calls 911 for police or fire, the operator tells them, I'm sorry, but you are no longer on the grid when it comes okay. to our services. That's beautiful. What <laughs> kind of fucking... Listen. <laughs> How many no times... are on the grid. <laughs> what, the, the, fi- the, fire, the firemen don't get like a break or a lunch to go and get, you know, like this person, she don't go and go out for lunch? <laughs> This is what the firemen do. I lived in New York City for 22 years, all right? This is just another great American tradition that is getting wiped away. The firemen get on the fire truck, and they all go, like not all of them, but five or six of them, they go to the local supermarket, usually in the half uniform with the pants on, the T-shirts. They double park the fire truck, and they go in, and they load up the super, the basket to have the big meal at the firehouse for the next three or four days while they were all on shift together. Mm-hmm. My only problem with any of that when they did it is when they would come into the fire, uh, to the supermarket, I usually was with Jackie already by then, and I felt like, you know, she'd rather been sleeping with half of them than me because they're so <laughs> handsome walking up the fucking aisles like the studs that they are. But it was just cool. It's cool. And you think because he's shopping for sausage in aisle 10, he's going to get to your fucking house fire any less quick? Come on. Well, what do we do? What is happening, bro? What is happening? You don't have to be at the firehouse to take a call. It's not like when they leave, 911's going to go, shit, it's going to be an hour. They're at Lucky's getting burgers for the uh, for the big <laughs> yeah. cookout tonight. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, shit. What the fuck? Unbelievable, man. And, and bigger than that, bigger than that. Don't worry about it. Just don't worry about it. When there's a fire, we'll be there. Other than that, don't worry about shit. Because if there's a fire, are you going to run in and save everybody? No, we will. So just back off. <laughs> Unbelievable. I, I just don't understand how we don't just bow and, and say thank you to these men. The cops, I don't the firemen, the soldiers, it's just insane to me. 
I don't know either. But what I'm bothered more about yeah. is the person went to Lucky's, yeah. saw the fire truck, right? Went home, right? Tight went on their computer, right? And typed it out, printed it out. And put it in their car for the next time they saw the truck. You know, you know the. Well, they went to the firehouse. They put it on the firehouse door. The or goal. whatever. They, they, they made a day of it. They went home. They I know. And they went to the firehouse door to do it. I mean, come on. Nothing well, going say, on. The, the, the action, the typing is a bit much. But as we both know. A few episodes back, I wrote a letter and put it on a guy's windshield. That that didn't even go away right away. This guy tried to threaten me. It was ridiculous. But um, I respect the uh, motivation but to write a note. But for this thing, it's like, you know, I'm big into the note. The, the note really, really hammers somebody. When they come out and there's a note, they're like, whoa. But not for that. That's ridiculous. Was yours a handwritten note? Oh, handwritten, man, of course, and just, you know, in scratch. I wrote it the way I felt, angry. It looked like <laughs> it was written in anger. <laughs> I think I think a handwritten note is the way to go because, like you said, I think you could really get the tone more with uh, pen to paper than you could just doing a generic, you know, Word document. Um, yeah. But even that, I mean, like, if you're going to write a note right there on the hood of your car and then put it, I could see. But to go home, fire up the computer, make sure you got paper in the printer, print the damn thing out, then get in the car and then go all the way to the firehouse and not be worried at all that some a fireman's going to come out while you're putting it on the window. I'm surprised they're not looking at the camera going, what the fuck? Who's coming up to the firehouse? Johnny, go take a look at this, you know, and yeah. how they got. No, the woman in the email, she said her husband and them, they just shake it off. But, you know, she's like, but it bothered me. I had to share it with you. And I'm like, it bothers me too, man. It's ridiculous. I know. Man, what are you going to, it's, it's well, just. Uh, that's why you call, that's why you contact the Pete and Sebastian show. If you have a grievance with somebody, man. C g give it to us. We'll put it out there. Now it's out there. Now, now that people yeah. know that whoever this person is, maybe this person listens to the cast and just saw their letter up on the cast. That'd be nice. That'd be nice. A little embarrassment. You know? Yeah. I don't know, though. Someone who would do that probably doesn't listen to the cast. Yeah, no. I, I don't think that's a cast listener. Um, um, all right, what else? What else well, we got up on it? I'm just looking at the notes here. Well, yeah. Well, a little side thing. What's your take yeah. on this? And uh, well, let me just play it out for you. Long story short, uh, Rob Schneider, actor, comedian, Saw him on an interview recently, and I liked what I saw. Right, it was particular, some particular, and I really liked it. Now, I had written for this guy a while back. I think you remember that for the award show oh, yeah. thing. Uh, so I had his number, and like you know, we exchanged text while I was writing for it. You know, and I haven't used it since. I don't think. No, I haven't ever. I don't know Rob Schneider. So I was like, man, do I still have it? And I was in my car waiting for Sadie at school. And I had it, so I was like, yeah, let me shoot him a text. I'm like, hey, Rob, it's comedian Pete Corielli. Um, I don't even know if it's still your number, bro, but I just wanted to say, blah, blah, really liked the interview, man, da-da-da, right? Kept it short, boom. I get back a text that says, uh, you have the wrong number, right? That's all I get back. So then I go home and I tell Jackie, how do I know it's not Rob Schneider texting you have the wrong number? To shut me down so she goes well, why don't you call i go because then he'll know i'm calling so she goes so you want someone to call i go i'm gonna save it for the cast i think i want patrick to call because i'm a little worried because somebody somebody's on the other end of that number they texted mm -hmm. back you have the wrong number i'm wondering if we have patrick call that number if rob schneider is gonna go hello <laughs> <laughs> And Jackie goes, what if he does say hello? I go, well, either way, we hang up. But now I know where I stand with Robbie. What's what's the legality on that, Patrick, to call somebody on a show? Let's say if I called the number and the guy said hello. Oh, my God. It'd be three digits in if Patrick wasn't part I'm of the show. I'm pretty sure we, we can call anybody we want. And then <laughs> if it turns into a thing that you don't want to air, we don't have to air it. But we could, we could do whatever. Yeah, we call. 
Well, I mean, you know, it's the wrong number. We didn't realize what we were calling. By the way, so, ac- according to the text, we're not calling Rob Schneider, so it shouldn't be an issue. Issue. By the way, the, uh, I am a fan of Rob Schneider. We're just having fun here. Yeah, uh, yeah. Good so, the uh, Star 6 9 still work? Oh, man, I don't Who know. Who cares? It's, you don't know Patrick. Oh, no. I, <laughs> That's why I want Patrick to call. If he, if he right. calls you back, Patrick, could, just could, be like wrong number. Could you get... Could you get the audio on the guy if you call? I'm going to call this number on speakerphone right now. Okay, okay but listen, when we call, all we're going to do yeah. is nothing. Let the person go hello, hello, and do whatever they're going to do. But we're not going to say anything. We're not going to ask if they're Rob Schneider, right? I mean, no, I'm going to go. I just wanna... uh, no, I'm going to go, Rob? When he picks up, what, I'm going to go. Yeah. I'm gonna go yeah, but Pete. <laughs> All right, there's no. an echo going on here. There's, there's an echo. Sorry. That's not yeah, good yeah, though, because gotta... if you do, if you do that, and then you go Rob, and then he goes, yeah, you're gonna go, hey, it's Sebastian. No, then we hang up. You're gonna we hang, hang up? up. Yeah. All We're right, just gonna get wanna... if this is Rob right, or not. We're right. not gonna go, hey, what's going on? I haven't seen you in a while. I'm gonna go. He's gonna go, hello. I'm gonna go, Rob. He's gonna go, no. And we're gonna hang up. Or he's gonna go, yeah. And we're gonna love hang it. up. Love it. Love it. Okay. Bro. Love it. Love it. See what's going on. Please leave your message for Why is it Danny. What do you say? It's Danny. 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 Yeah. It is the wrong number. So he wasn't oh, trying to get rid of you. All right. I have a All movie right. idea in my so, head, and I had a part for Rob Schneider. I almost changed it to <laughs> <laughs> the guy from Karate Kid, but Robbie's still in. <laughs> By the way, we have a guest next week. We haven't had a guest in a long time. I think we should give the listeners a little heads up. Uh, Billy Gardell from I Heart Abishola and Mike and Molly. By the way, I just have to say, you know, you're doing this new show with Chuck Lorre, and Chuck Lorre is such a legendary writer. That I think, just to challenge himself, when he made this new hit, uh, Bob Hart Abishola, he's like, let me give it a really difficult title that's hard to remember. Just to see if I can still have a hit with a title that's hard to remember. I mean, you don't know if you should say hard or put the hard. It has nothing to do with Abishola. I got that down. It's the heart thing. I don't know what's going on. But still, another hit going into season number four. So the awesome Billy Gardell, who I think was the last guest we ever had on. He's coming back on. <laughs> yeah, there's there's not really a wide range of guests that we have on. We only have, I think, two guests on, and it's the same guest every time. It's either either Watt or Gardell. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, right? so far. Yes. Multiple appearances by both. <clears throat> so what's up? You got uh, some notes I see over there? Well, you know. <sighs> I went back and I uh, went back to Chicago and I uh, I had all the guys over at my house the other night. Similar to what you did with your buddies when you went, you know, I don't care how long I've been away from these guys. As soon as we get back together, it's like it's like the old days. Hilarious, Comparing right? notes, stories, same stories, right? Same stories, but they're funny every time you tell them. I don't know what, for what reason, uh, but it's great. they're always funny. But I found it odd, you know. I went back home, and I'd say the weather was around 56, 57 degrees at night. You know, slight chill in the air, not freezing. But I had five guys over. Out of those five guys, every guy wore a vest. It it, it was it was like almost a the uniform of the Chicago. 50 year old male right now right. do the, you the, find the outdoor vest yeah outdoor yeah. vest when you go home or the guys from home right are are you the one that's like a unicorn that dresses differently than everybody else or does everybody pretty much have their own style literally right. it looked like this was a a basketball team and they said we're wearing vests on the next game right what yeah. What's what's the deal? Now, well, your my friends? guys Same are thing? all so they're all so different, you know. <clears throat> One's a New York City cop with tattoos everywhere and he's huge. The other one 
you know, is re- already retired. He smokes his Marlboros. He wears tank tops and uh, he fishes every day. One's a dentist. Like they don't like all commute or do the same thing. But I gotta say, the vest. I'm in Berlin and I'm walking with Jackie, and it was like a chilly. I didn't want a coat. I didn't want. And we were in a clothing area, and I'm like, you know, what would be great right now. A vest. I don't have a vest at home, right? So if I got a vest, and she's like, no, you don't. So we went in like two, one store, two stores. I didn't see a vest if I didn't see the one I like. And I got to tell you, by the third day I'm in Berlin, I said to Jackie, I don't think I'll ever need a vest again. I'm so glad I didn't get the vest. Like it, the vest weather is so specific. You know what I'm saying? It's just, how often are you like, arms are hot, chest is cold? It's a very, <laughs> very specific. So like, I don't know. It's like 55 to 57. You get, you know. You get up to 58, you don't need a jacket. You get down to 54, you need a jacket. 55, 57, you go vest. Yeah, I don't know, man. I've never wanted not to have sleeves. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I was never in a jacket going, God, I wish these sleeves weren't here. Even, so, even when the guy invented the vest, if you were a designer, and the first guy comes out of your designing room with the puffy vest, I'd be like, the fuck, no sleeves? <laughs> I think I'd fire him. I think I'd fire him. <laughs> I called well, to my wife. This fucking guy's taking this. I'm paying him hundreds of thousands of dollars to design shit. He's taking sleeves off. Get the <laughs> fuck out of here. <laughs> well, how about this? I've seen a vest with a hood. Right. right so, right. No sleeves, but it's cold enough that you need the hood. I, I, right. I don't understand. Wear that whole vest thing. Now, when I was growing up, and I wish I had the photo. I wish I had the photo. I, I have it. I just don't have it readily available. Ooh, 1993. 1993. Cancun. Right? Jean shorts with black Reebok high tops with a tube sock rolled down and a black leather vest. That's it. <coughs> oh my dude, that's literally um the village people. <laughs> I mean it really is. It's like uh, if if you described that, I would say, "Oh, you were at the Village People concert, like and that was the guy up there." <laughs> it wasn't. Now, did you did you was... ever sometimes get mistaken you and your friends for you know being gay or no? Never. <laughs> I'm being serious. <laughs> I got a theory on this. I think the gay community. St- Stole a lot of their looks from the Italians. Uh, yeah. You think? Like, all right. Yeah. Well, I mean, if, if you look at the Italian way of dress, right, it's really similar to a lot of gay men and how, like a lot of tight form. That's con- true. You know, like very tight you clothes. Got a really good point. Even the bathing suit, they go thong over there in Italy and stuff like that, you know? I mean, well, yeah. yeah. That speedo, to, you know, Italian man in a speedo. I mean, speedo's Italian, right? Man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's, it's got to be. It ends it at all. So, right. speedo. Was that, a, was, that, was that a gay guy or was that an Italian guy? I, I think it was an Italian guy, and the gay was like, uh, Italians are doing speedos. Right. Maybe we should implement that into the repertoire. Yeah. You got so, a good point. Yeah. Actually, when you see a bunch of gay guys, you might ask them, you Italian? That's, you know, there, there were times Freddie Mercury could pass for Guido, <laughs> you know, like real Guido Italian. And then not that Italian. Yeah, the, yeah. the chain. I know. Perfect I know, example. Right. Perfect example. So we got I was watching at that. Yeah. Good. You're watching yeah. what? No, go ahead. I'm not going side note. No, no. We we, we 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 got oh. the you know my my dad made pizzas. Uh, and it was good, man. It was but they came over about seven, left at twelve, and we did that whole thing that everybody does when they get together. 
is uh, at the end of the night, we should all go on vacation. Did you guys do this? <laughs> they said it. They said it. Yeah. I said, no, I ain't doing that. I go, I'll do this again. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's cr- now, yeah. They do that. It's so funny, man. You're right. We get drunk and in the driveway, we should go to you know Mexico. This, that, and the other thing. My question here is, how old is too old to share a room with another man on vacation? Like, what age is that? Is that okay when you're fifty? Does that cut off at twenty one? What's right. acceptable? It's interesting. It seems like it goes from being acceptable to reaching an age where it's not acceptable to reaching an age where it's acceptable again. You know what I'm saying? Like my dad, by the end, when he go on these golf trips, he loved rooming with my uncle. My uncle Bob and him were real tight. And my dad wouldn't want his own room, and neither would my uncle. You know, they like regrouping, being in there, chatting. I, I can't sleep next to another man. I, I just can't do it, man. Even if I was in the war, I'd have to dig my old foxhole just for the fucking sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Listen, I'm going to nap right there in that hole. I'll be back over. I, I can nap in front of another man, but I can't sleep. Like, I can't do an under-the-sheet pillow. Get like how, you know? But I can, okay. I can put a head down like a cowboy and sleep in front of another man. Okay, what about this? Either you're staying at somebody's house or you're rooming with another man in a hotel room. Right. That other man takes a shower and uses the bar soap. Right. And then you come in there. Can you use that same bar soap he just used? Absolutely. First of all, it's got to be a friend or a relative. I wouldn't do it with a stranger. But, yeah, I feel like if you hold soap under hot water... The only thing that's just absolutely just just jarring is when you got to use your nail to scrape off one of his hairs on the on the thing. That is that's right up there with like literally licking somebody else's shit. I mean, that's just disgusting. <laughs> that is just absolutely. So when I'm doing that, when I'm in an environment where I know there's another man who might use that bar of soap, uh, cuz I remember one time it was so embarrassing years ago. I was at Brewer's house, Jim Brewer's, and after I showered, Brew told me that his wife said, I I got to rinse out the shower next time in the morning. I was staying for a couple of days. I was leaving too much body hair in the shower. Oh, oh my God. God, bro. I was never you so, ever since. I do. I leave a lot of body hair. You would think you just washed a, a farm animal when I get out of a shower. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> but I have a cup upstairs, and I always got to rinse out all the hair when I'm done. But now, ever since that was years ago, I don't. I mean, I don't leave an ounce of hair. But I, I take that soap and I look and I look, because that's pretty gross. But I'll use the soap after another man. But the thing is, if you went away with your buddies, yeah, how many days would it be fun? Days and nights. Uh, three nights. Wow. Three nights. Wow. You, okay, we we were talking about going to Vegas, going to Mexico, and doing activities around that. It's not like just hanging out at the pool. It's like one day you go to the shooting range. Next day you rent a, a boat and you go, you know, wave running or whatever the hell you do. And then, you know, maybe the third day we uh, we'll go race uh cars at a racetrack you know like do do stuff almost like a kind of a mini bachelor party i think three right. days is a nice three night three nights that's a two long. days why bother what long. that's uh, yeah i mean i i think it's because once you start to get past telling the old stories you know then we're like we're we getting into each other's lives really at this point like you know what i'm saying like we haven't kept in touch that way in years we get together and we rehash the golden years in high school the fun you know whatever so i feel what we did i liked you slide in mid-morning on a friday you do an activity i couldn't agree more we fish but you got to do an activity mm-hmm. come back get loaded drink all night long tell all those stories 
wake up the next day hungover, do another activity, have a more mild night with a delicious meal, and then see you next morning gone, man. Next yeah. morning, you're waking up, you're going go-kart racing. I'm going home. I mean, you, come on. <laughs> yeah, no, you might be right. Two, two nights might be plenty, but I haven't seen these guys. And you're right, after you exhaust the stories, I feel after you exhaust the stories, though, and you're there for three nights, some guy's going to open up and tell you something yeah. that you that you didn't ever expect him to tell you, you know? Like, I feel right. by the third night, you're running out of stories. One guy's going to lean over and go, guys, listen, I don't know if I ever told you this, but 15 years ago, I killed someone. You know, like, I feel that that right. might come out, you know, on a that, three-day that, trip. Me, too. That's why I'm leaving after day two. <laughs> I don't want to hear that story. I, I got a nice remembrance of you. You were the da 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 guy in high school. I don't need to know you murdered mm -hmm. somebody, you know? So before we finish the show, I got to say, today is 22 years of marriage, bro. 22 oh, year anniversary. Wow. Happy anniversary. Yeah. 22, bro. You're three away Thank from you. 25. This is unbelievable. It really <sighs> is. It's a long time, man. You guys doing yeah. anything? Uh, not, 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 I mean, we're going to spend some time this weekend together, but it, it's just so funny how like yesterday, I, today is our anniversary, but yesterday, I guess Jackie wrote my card and then we got in an argument and at one point she goes, uh, you know what? Every, I just wrote your anniversary card and everything I wrote in it, forget it. Cause I don't mean any of that shit. Right. So which is so funny. Right. And I feel like when people ask, what's the key to a good marriage? I feel like the key is the arguing because everybody knows where they stand and i love that you know what i mean there's no you know like how many times you hear a marriage story that ended and the one person goes she was sad for a long time and i didn't know <laughs> right i mean you're like me you can tell within three minutes you're in the kitchen you look at lana and go what's wrong what's going on let's go right <laughs> Are you six months in and you had no idea she's crying at the pantry Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can so, tell as soon as she gets out of bed, or I get out of bed. As soon as, as soon as we see each other, you could just tell them the demeanor of how the per person's like leaning or whatever. Right? It, what's going on? And then, sure enough, it's like, well, no, I just talked to my mom. You know, it's something, right? Something, right? The initial good morning. The initial good morning. You know, if it's good morning, I'm like. Nice. It's like a chirping bird, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes she'll come downstairs. Oh my like, oh God! Already yeah. not even downstairs. Here we go. Here we go. So I need you to take on our latest uh, uh, fight. You know, it was not, it was short lived, but so there's this thing with these marathons, and it's called the Abbott. I don't know if I ever explains to you if you remember it, but anyway, there's six marathons, and if you compare run all six of these you've completed what they call in the marathon world running the abbot one is in tokyo japan one is in london one is in berlin one is chicago one is new york and one is boston right so you know she has a friend who's done the abbot done them all one year actually and done them multiple times and jack and i have had conversations about it like that ah, you know so you travel around doing marathons you know but when she got accepted to the Berlin one, we just thought it'd be fun, right? So we would go as a family and check it out. So then she goes the other day, uh, yesterday. So my friend is running the Tokyo Japan Marathon again. And you know how I always thought about maybe doing the Abbott? I figured maybe I could just go when she goes, because you know, you're not gonna wanna go all the way to Tokyo for that. And then I'll just do it and you know, come back. So I go, you're gonna, you're gonna go all the way to Tokyo to run a marathon. And she's like, yeah, well, you know, the Abbott mean, mean a lot to me. And it's just something about being an accomplishment. And, and this is the thing where we got in the argument. I go, listen, running a marathon is an accomplishment. Running a marathon in Tokyo is no more of an accomplishment than running a marathon in Niagara Falls. All right. That, beyond the running of it, no one's more impressed because you went to Tokyo. Though. And she goes, yes, they are. I go, no, they're not. No, they're not. And she goes, even when I did Berlin, people were like, wow. I go, yeah, they were like, wow, you went all the way to Berlin? <laughs> they were, I go, they were impressed. And she goes, oh, so now it's not impressive that I do a marathon. I go, it's impressive. Anytime anyone does a marathon, 100%. I'm just saying 
going in, uh, somewhere far away, it doesn't make it any more impressive. I'm sorry, you know? And I'm like, and by the way, just put yourself in my shoes, Jack. Uh, you get mugged and killed in Tokyo, right? Now, I'm with Sadie at some parent-teacher conference three years later, and they're like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm in private, your mom. Oh, well, she was mugged in Tokyo. And that, you don't think that lady's going to be like, your mother went to Tokyo without the family? <laughs> I go, I got I to gotta walk around with that? I go, how irresponsible that is me. And then she goes, something could happen to me at the top supermarket. She goes, what, what if there was, I'm, I'm, I'm shopping at Tops, and then something happens to me there with a shooting, and it wouldn't have happened if I was in the marathon in Tokyo. I'm like, I'll take the chances with Tops. Get the hell out of here. But, but, bro, is it any more impressive traveling to do the marathon? I mean, a marathon is impressive, no doubt, but traveling to do one, does that make it more impressive? You know, uh, I never understood the running of a marathon just because I'm not a runner. Not that I'm mm -hmm. knocking it. It's just that I, I can't grasp running 26 miles. It's just a lot. I never understood the um, the traveling to run. Now, again, I'm not a runner. Right, and I don't know that world intimately. I'm right. just saying, from an outsider point of view, and I understand people are passionate about that. But for me, I'm kind of with you. I'm like, you know, right, Tokyo. <laughs> and and to your point, and you're being very uh, diplomatic about. It, I appreciate it. It's not like you're running like this. Oh, there's Big Ben. Oh, it is Parliament, you know, when you're yeah. in London and shit. You, 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 you. So like, it don't, it don't matter. You're not going under the Eiffel Tower in Paris. Oh wow. So, you know, I, that's, and I get it. I get it. When you, when you finish, there's an energy, and you know, all these people accomplishment. But guess what? There's that same energy when they finish in Erie, Pennsylvania when they finish in Milwaukee, and when they finish in St. Louis, just don't know, wait, 13 hours. No, same. I get you. So, I mean, I would, I'd be more prone to agree with Jackie if she told you, Pete, I want to go to Tokyo because I want to taste what real sushi tastes like. Well, we had plans to go to Tokyo someday. I go, I go to her. By the way, I thought, like, if you ever did want to do the Abbott... Eventually, maybe Tokyo will be the last one. And when you're in your 60s and Sadie's out of the house and you and I want to go on a long trip, we'll go to Tokyo. You'll bang it out in six hours. And she goes, she goes, I wouldn't do it in six hours. I'm like, all right. I'm just saying you're in your 60s. But point is, you go over there, you finish it up. We celebrate. You did the thing. I go, instead of, you know, packing a duffel bag and dropping down to Tokyo and running and coming home. Just, come on, come on. Come yeah, on. how about this? How about we do this? She goes ahead of you. Yeah. She goes ahead of you. She does the marathon. Two days after the marathon. <laughs> what the fuck is this? <laughs> That's, she's hearing her. I do my walls with soundproof. She's holding her Berlin medal up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, oh my oh. God. Look, listen. Have ever yeah. go ever go to the, 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 the you know how comfortable you are? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm totally fine. It's funny they get these medals. Okay. By the way, is there if you win, is there a cash prize? Yeah, I believe if you win New York, you get a hundred k. You know, but um, you know that dude, bro, that money just gets wired straight to a bank in Kenya. <laughs> <laughs> Um. Uh, yeah, may maybe have her go, and then you guys meet her there two days afterwards, and then after make a vacation. Yeah, maybe a vacation out of it. Yeah, I don't know because you know, know you don't I'd want say... you can't vacation with her prepping for a uh, you know it's hard like you know she's prepping for the marathon. It's not like you're gonna go hey let's go out and you know get blasted exactly. Tonight. She's like getting ready for it. So maybe you come exactly. later and you enjoy Tokyo as a family. Just a suggestion. That's a good no, you're right. You're right. And that's that's what she was saying too. She was like, the training is annoying too. So yeah. like, you know, she's yeah, but I hear you. 
But yeah, that's the thing. We're going to go over there. I, I, I got a sightseeing book out. And meanwhile, she's like checking the route for the big race on Sunday. Yeah, yeah. You got me on the same page. So. Yeah. Anyway, another good hang. Good hang here. Uh, Pete and Sebastian show. Please share it with five of your friends. We are on Patreon. We are giving you an episode a month. We are giving you some behind the scenes, all right? If that chat room saying that we're not doing enough, listen, customer's always right. Maybe we should populate the thing with a couple more things to get people uh-huh. re-engaged in the Patreon. You know, I don't know. I, I feel like we're giving them a glimpse. Maybe it's not enough. Who knows? So we'll be cautious of that moving forward. Uh, other than that, big announcement here. Every single episode of the Pete and Sebastian show is now up and running on Audio Boom. So there's one to now. Wow. So you can listen to the entire catalog uh, at your leisure. Oh, that's great. That is fantastic. The entire ca- Wow. All right, yeah. so go back to the beginning, folks, if you want to hear how it all started. It's been going a long time, having a blast doing it. That is awesome to hear, man. Yes. All right, so we will see you guys next week here on the Pete and Sebastian Show. Pete and Sebastian signing off.